When my husband and I decided to start a family, we discovered that we were the one in six couples that will battle infertility. We went through five rounds of IVF and eventually an egg donor. We had to make choices about expensive medical treatments. We had to brush off unhelpful comments like, just go on a cruise. Infertility tests your resilience to recurring disappointment. It forces you to face your own limiting beliefs, like when you can gain a family, but give up a genetic connection. It teaches you how to keep fighting, even when the science is complicated and the odds feel overwhelming. In that respect, battling infertility is like fighting climate change. As Norwegian climate psychologist Per Espen Stoknes puts it, the biggest obstacle to fighting climate change lies between our ears. Even deniers often turn to denial as a way to avoid admitting, look, I know someone will suffer, I'm just glad it's not me. But when we asked Vancouverites how we could become the greenest city in the world, 30,000 people showed up to contribute their ideas. I learned that people want to help shape a better future. I learned that the opposite of denial is faith. The opposite of fear is action. I know some people question our choice to have children, given fears of runaway population growth and very real planetary limits. But models suggest that population will peak around 11 billion. So for me, the question becomes, how do we provide enough food, shelter, energy for 11 billion people? Our current systems are doing a lousy job. Half the food we produce never makes it to our tables. Burning stuff to create energy can only ever be 35% efficient. I grew up in Saudi Arabia, an oil producing country where you can still lose your head and gas is cheaper than water. But renewable energy is cheaper, cheaper than natural gas, and it can help us with a pathway to democratize our energy systems. We can each own a piece of it. We can put our transactions on the blockchain and take back control of our energy system. In Vancouver, we grew green jobs 35% with our citywide green economy strategy. Nobody needs to be left behind, but we have had a free ride since the start of the Industrial Revolution with no price on carbon pollution. I hear people like the Koch brothers tell us businesses will fight carbon pricing. But I talk to businesses and they tell me what they want is predictability and consistency. They'll even work with government to create smart policy that can drive market transformation. They just want a level playing field. It's like in Vancouver. We developed a really deep expertise in building envelopes when we were fixing all the leaky condos. Then eventually, these experts worked with our policymakers on designing energy efficient buildings. And today, we've created a pathway for all buildings to be zero energy or zero emissions within 12 years. Within 20 years, we will phase out new fossil fuel vehicles in BC. TransLink will provide all our transit without the use of fossil fuels. These initiatives set out a time frame that business can respond to, expediting the products and services of the future. When Sweden was debating whether to switch to driving on the right, they talked about it for 12 years. When they finally did it, they did it overnight. So as business leaders, who are fighting climate change. We all need the courage to wake up tomorrow morning and drive on the wrong side of the road. We need to stop worrying about who is in charge. In his book on culture, Daniel Coyne tells us that status management actually inhibits good performance. Instead, we need leaders who will inspire us to achieve more together than we can ever achieve alone. In my line of work, that means working with business leaders to bring about a new paradigm where business is a force for good, where we measure what really matters, we can set science-based targets, renewable energy goals, where we go public with these commitments because we know that will attract the best ideas, the most fiercely loyal customers. We can even be transparent with our competitors because like Olympic marathoner, Shalane Flanagan, we know 
that training with our rivals for the biggest race of our lives will motivate us to run further and faster. And we can wield our influence wherever we find we have it, as board members, as shareholders, as employees. Even the humble act of planting a tree delivers a painfully underestimated ecosystem service. Scientists are telling us we're facing a silent spring. We've lost three billion birds across North America. Half of the world's wildlife has disappeared since I was born. These losses erode our livelihoods, our health, our security. If we don't act now, the planet will warm more than three degrees, and that will leave a totally different planet for our kids. The ice age was only four degrees cooler than it is today. I know, the science is complicated and the odds seem overwhelming for. At stake is whether our children will even have a choice to start families of their own one day. But in my experience, that choice is worth fighting for. Thank you.